Channel 6 is brought to you by Amentum. We have had a beautiful Masters weekend, and next week will be the warmest week of the year with temperatures soaring into the mid to upper 80s and plenty of sunshine. More details on all of that coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 at 6, many people visit Augusta for the Masters tournament, but do patrons know golf link up? We test their knowledge. Plus, some patrons are already making their way home, and residents are sending them off in their special way. We have those details. And it's the final countdown to file your taxes. What you should do before tomorrow. Those details in your news at 6 start now. Live from Television Park. This is WJBF News Channel 6 at 6. Good evening. I'm Bria Smith. Thanks for joining us on News Channel 6 at 6. It's Sunday at the Masters, which means the final round is underway. Right now, here's a look at the leaderboard. Scotty Scheffler is seeking his second green jacket and currently has a two-shot lead. And second is rookie Ludwig Adverberg, who is seeking his first major championship win. And third is Max Homa. And rounding out the top five is Tommy Fleetwood and Colin Morikawa. How well do you know your golf terms? Handled here put patrons' knowledge to the test today, and it was anything but a double bogey. To scout out the real golf fans from the ones who are just here for the sandwiches, we're playing a couple rounds of golf terms trivia. Let's hope they don't whip it. Jonathan Hughes started out strong. <laughs> okay, we're going to start out easy. What is an ace? Uh, that's whenever you get a hole in one. Absolutely. Okay, what's an albatross? Oh, that's a, a two on a par five. But then he started to fumble. What's a dub? A dub? I mean, I don't know, like a good hole? I don't know. <laughs> That's a bad or a missed shot. Oh. <laughs> Next, we quiz Cammie Brannon and her husband, Jimmy. He started out humble about his golf knowledge. Do y'all play golf? I do. You do? Okay, so you think you're pretty much an expert when it comes to golf terminology? <laughs> Just depends. We'll see, right? <laughs> but he didn't choke. What's a beach? Bunker. Sand trap. Eagle. An eagle is a three on a par five or a two on a par four. Divot. It's when you hit your shot, the turf that comes up, it's a little hole. A duffer. Terrible golfer. Mulligan. That's uh, an additional shot. So you've a, a first second shot. shot. If your first shot's bad, you hit another one, you call it mulligan. And then lastly, what is a whiff? It means when you totally miss That's the ball. That's what I do. I do that too. <laughs> Ryan Wilson struggled on some of the questions. You know what a barber is? A guy that cuts your hair? <laughs> yes. But it's also someone who talks a lot when you're trying to, like, do your shot or whatever. But he came out on top at the end. Four. When people yell four. Um, that, to get out of the way, I hit a ball at you. <laughs> I know. Um, well, as you can see, we don't have many duffers out on the course. Those patrons pretty much aced the test. And if there was an honorary green jacket, we would give it to them. At Augusta National Golf Club, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. Be sure to stay tuned for the Masters Report tonight at new at a new time. Join our WJBF sports team as they recap the final round of the 88th Masters Tournament. That is tonight at 11 p.m. right here on News Channel 6. It's time now for our first look at our weather with meteorologist Jenna Petrachi. Jenna, it's definitely feeling like spring. Yeah, it's been a beautiful weekend. Really couldn't beat it. And if you remember, Bria, last year at Masters, it was the complete opposite. In fact, on Saturday of Masters Week in 2023, we had high temperatures only topping off in the 40s. It was cloudy. It was wet. And on Sunday of last year, we made it to a high of 66 with a little bit of rain. So Sunday still wasn't great either. But this Sunday, today, we made it to a high of 85. It it was a nice dry day with plenty of sunshine and the wind settled down at least a little bit. It's still breezy outside, but not nearly as bad as it was, say, on Friday. Temperature change is around 6 degrees in Augusta, 9 degrees warmer in Aiken. So yesterday we made it into the upper 70s, but now we're in the 80s across the board. 84 in Augusta and Aiken, 82 in Allendale. Thompson, you're at 85. Wrightsville also at 84 and 83 
in Edgefield. And as I mentioned, the winds are still a little breezy right now as we take a live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam. Camera view shaking a little bit with our American flag blowing with the breeze coming in from the southwest. 11 miles per hour currently in Augusta and Aiken, 12 in Edgefield, 10 in Waynesboro. And those wind gusts up to around 20 miles per hour. So no wind alerts in effect though. The winds will continue to settle down throughout the week. High pressure and control, a little bit of cloud cover to our west. will become partly cloudy around the 9 o'clock hour with temperatures staying on the warm side 80 still at seven o'clock 70s by nine o'clock and then as we go into the week ahead it's going to continue to get warmer i'm talking mid to upper 80s pretty much all week long lots of sunshine and little to no rain in the forecast more details on all of that coming up shortly but back to you bria Thanks, Jenna. Well, with Masters Week coming to a close, patrons from across the county will be leaving Augusta to head home. Isabella Moody has more. As patrons leave the Garden City, those that live here have a special way of saying goodbye. With over 300 planes parked at Daniel Field Airport for this Masters tournament, there are plenty of planes for people to sit and watch take off. The weather is beautiful. It's a perfect time to sit out here and enjoy the playing for that. Uh, the Masters uh, traffic was pretty bad up that way, but um, just one of the joys of it. So I'm keeping him alive and uh, keep him entertained for a couple of hours. I'm not sure uh, what time of day uh, that they really start taking off. They really start leaving, but I'm assuming that sometime this, this evening. Yeah. So uh, we'll be back and forth. We might come back out later. Each year, many take part in a tradition of going and sitting outside of Daniel Village to enjoy the weather and watch the planes take off from the runway at the end of the Masters Tournament. This is our fourth year now, third or fourth year. We're both off work, it's the weekend. Uh, it's just something we enjoy doing, coming out here, watching the airplanes take off and, and enjoying the day off. This is a tradition that many do each year to close off this busy week, and we'll look forward to next year. In Augusta, Isabel Moody, WJBF News Channel 6. We're talking about stroke risks and life-saving stroke treatments on the next Jenny Show. A nurse at Piedmont Augusta tells us why she was in the right place at the right time. Kenesha Sullivan had come out of breast surgery and was in the recovery room when the unexpected happened. And I had my friend with me, and she um, she asked, how are you doing? I said, I feel kind of queasy. So she called the nurse in, and when the nurse walked in, she said, hey, how are you doing? And I went to tell her I'm feeling nauseous, and nothing came out. It was just garble. They called up what we call a rapid response. So everyone responded. They took me to the ER. These are all of my coworkers and right. friends, so they're right. standing around and I couldn't speak. I could hear and understand everything they were saying, but I just couldn't respond. Hear the rest of Kanisha's story and why she says she's grateful for the comprehensive stroke program at Piedmont Augusta. Also find out how Piedmont Foundation helps patients at the hospital and programs in our community. We'll also recognize our latest winner of the Giving Your Best Award, who friends call the fittest person in Barnwell County, Tuesday at 1230 on Jenny. Tomorrow is the last day to file your taxes for 2023. Even if you are in a tight spot financially, you still need to file by Monday or request an extension. But an extension is not more time to pay if you owe money. If you can't pay right now, don't panic. One thing I would not do is be in a rush to put it on a credit card. I think that could be sort of tempting, but the average credit card charges almost 21% these days. That's a record high will work with you to come up with a payment plan. You may have to pay interest, but it will be lower than the average credit card. And today was very warm, of course, and the warmth continues all into next week. In a couple days, we'll make it into the upper 80s. More details on that right after the break. The WGBF Live Viper 6 Skyview Network is sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Low prices, big selection, and committed to quality customer service. It's the on least restore, we're Mattress Warehouse. Now, your most accurate.
Accurate Forecast with WJDF Live Viper 6. Welcome back. Now, during this time of the year at Augusta, we always have very crazy weather. It's up and down all the time. Sometimes we have a long, dry stretch. Other times we have some very wet days. So here's the Masters climate over the past several years, going back all the way to 1934. Our highest day, our warmest day, I should say, our highest temperature was 92 degrees all the way back in the 60s. That was on Friday in Masters Week. And then on the other hand, we had a very cold morning only back in 2007. We were in the 20s. Definitely hard to believe that. And our wettest day on average was 1973 on Saturday. I'm sure that was not very fun for all the patrons here in town. Luckily, this weekend, though, not a drop of rain. We had plenty of sunshine, and it's still nice and sunny out as we take a live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam at Washington Road. It's really been a beautiful weekend. It has been pretty warm. We are up to 84 degrees. Our high today was 85. Southwest wind coming in at 11 miles per hour. A little bit breezy at times, but I'm very happy to report that the winds that we had on Friday and Thursday, those are done with. So no more wind alerts in place. It's just normal breeze-like conditions around the area with our consistent temperatures in the low to mid 80s. Satellite and radar showing the clear conditions for everyone. A little bit of cloud cover out to the west of us with a few showers in Alabama. Those showers will try to push into our area, but for the most part, it's going to be dry tonight with just a little bit of cloud cover. I'm giving it a birdie tomorrow. Pretty good forecast. The only reason I'm not giving it a hole in one is because this may be a little too warm for some people. We're all the way up into the mid 80s, so definitely well above average. And on top of that, we unfortunately do have the high pollen levels and not just tomorrow all week long. So it's pretty warm all this week and the pollen levels will be high. Definitely very spring-like or late spring-like you could say. Our coolest day this week will be Wednesday. We'll be down to 83 because of some cloud cover and then we'll finish off the week in the upper 80s. Our lows will be hovering around the 60 degree mark pretty much all week long. Upper 50s though for tomorrow morning and Tuesday morning with pretty low humidity so that's good news but our dew points will climb a little bit as we get more cloud cover over the next few days. Here it is on Featurecast tonight at 8 o'clock. As I mentioned, some of those showers trying to make their way into the viewing area, but we have enough dry air in place that they'll really just fall apart. So only a sprinkle or two tonight. Then as we go into Monday, nice and sunny. Then on Tuesday, the clouds will increase. More showers trying to move in, but overall, I'm giving it a 0% chance of rain all the way until next weekend. Now our lows tonight will be in the upper 50s. High tomorrow in the mid to upper 80s, 87 as your high tomorrow in Augusta. Now becoming partly cloudy on Tuesday, then mostly cloudy on your Wednesday. Back to sunshine on Thursday and Friday as those temperatures warm up to 88. And then next weekend, we will have just a 20% chance of rain in the forecast. Jenna, so glad to hear that we're heading into the 80 degree weather. Yeah. I can leave the jackets at home. <laughs> I know, and I'm glad we have no storms this week. So Absolutely. we need a break from that. Thank you, Jenna. And with the weather warming up, experts are offering safety advice to boaters before hitting the water. Keep in mind that safety should always come first. First responders say let a loved one know before you go out on the water every time and always bring your phone with you in case you have to call for help. It's important for the caller to stay on the phone with dispatch. The dispatch center has the ability to track that phone which in turn gives them the ability to guide us where we need to go. Specifically, nighttime is very rough for us. It's a very large lake, um, and there's a lot of boaters out. If you stay on the phone with 911, they can guide us directly to that person. Both the Georgia and South Carolina Departments of Natural Resources offer boat safety classes in person and online. Still ahead, reaction following Iran's attack against... Call attorney John Foy and Associates today.
week since the USC women's basketball team won the national championship, and today they finally celebrated. The team took home the title after defeating Iowa last week and completed an undefeated season. Thousands gathered today down Main Street in Columbia for the parade that ended with a pep rally on the steps of the state house. Head, head coach Don Staley spoke to the crowd after the parade about how she feels about coaching this team. It's incredibly an honor um, to coach this team here. It's an honor to, to work with the best coaches in the country. Yep. It, it's truly an honor to represent the city of Columbia and the state of South Carolina. Yes, it's an honor. This was the Gamecocks' third title in the past seven years. Saturday was the University of Georgia's annual G-Day for the Georgia Bulldogs football team. It's a chance for Bulldog fans to get their eyes on the 2024 team. That'll run out the tunnel in Sanford Stadium. And as much it is, as it is a chance for the fans to get eyes on the team, it's just as much as an opportunity for the coaching core, namely Kirby Smart, to see what his team is made of and who stands out. He spoke afterwards, and here's what he had to say about the game as well as the entire spring. Um, I thought our players uh, handled it the right way. I wanted to handle it like a game, very game-like uh, situations. You know, the next time we put on those uniforms, uh, it'll be for real. And when we play in, in Atlanta, I guess a really good opponent. So we want to find out where we are as a team and get a lot of guys reps. You know, we were kind of where we got guys that have got a lot of work and a lot of reps, you know, fifth year, fourth year guys. And then we've got about 40 guys that are in their first year. Offense probably didn't have as good a day as maybe they've had in the two scrimmages, but some of that was dictated by the, uh, the, the terms of which we scrimmaged with, which was passing and, and loose plays. And uh, they did a nice job uh, handling that in the second half. But overall, I don't evaluate things on today. I know you guys will ask questions and talk about today. For me, it was about the entire spring, 15 practices. Uh, very pleased with our, our health uh, coming out of it. The Georgia Bulldogs will open the 2024 season against Clemson on August 31st in Atlanta. The Braves may have won today's game over the Marlins 9-7, to but they are now without their star pitcher for the season. After making just two starts, Brave, Braves ace Spencer Strider is done for the rest of the 2024 season. Strider under, underwent damage surgery on Friday to repair the UCL in his right elbow. This time, an internal brace was used, which has allowed pitchers to return to the major in as little as nine months, whereas a Tommy John surgery typically takes 12 to 18 months to recover from. Strider had 20 to 5 record last season and led the major in strikeouts, and we'll be right back. Are you ready? Thanks. Here's another check of our 10-day forecast. It's going to be a warm and sunny day tomorrow, high of 87 degrees, 80 sticking around all week long. We will go down to 83 on Wednesday, thanks to some cloud cover, and then when we're back to sunshine on Thursday, up to 88. Our low temperature is around 60 degrees all week long, keeping things dry, and then eventually as we go into the weekend, just a 20% chance of showers. That continues into next Monday, and then all of next week, we'll be back down into the 70s, so definitely still warm. But if you like the 70s more than the 80s, next week will be good for you. But, Bria, I'm just excited for the warm weather, whether it's 70s or 80s. I'll take it all. Absolutely. So will I, Jenna. Thank you. That's our report for now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us again at 11. Good night.